Thank you for staying with us. We, we still have Mr. Yinka Dibayo on the show with us. Okay, so um, since you were talking about, um, you were going to ask something about, um, what's it called? Price hike. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. A lot of people right now, they're rushing to buy uh, stuff. I know there is a lockdown, but whenever you can peep out, you just go out to buy things. And you notice that there is a, 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 a surge in, in the prices. What, what causes that? Um, um, how does demand affect advertising? If and let me even to add to her question. So um, if we have products already on the shelf, you, you as an advertiser, you've done your part and you yeah. leave it, you know. So do you like have any regulatory body that goes to monitor that the, the, the body or distributors or whatever are actually selling at the price that you have advertised? Because I think it is your integrity that is at stake. You, you put the price there on TV and it's 50 naira. You know, and I go to the market and somebody is selling it for me for 200 naira. Tomorrow I won't believe your advert anymore. Do you understand? <laughs> yeah, well, well, of course, you can't realize it's a function of demand and supply. In a situation where, where, where demand outweighs supply, certainly you have a situation where some people want to cash in on that kind of situation. But of course, you have some, some uh, advertisers too, who are responsible enough to have people go out to do sports check and identify those people want to because at the end of the day like you really said it's going to impact on the image of the product as the, well as the image of the company behind it so often that the same people are, and there is also the consumer protection agency that we have in nigeria here who of course once their attention are called to stuff like that they step in to ensure that the right price so but of course you know this is an abnormal situation even in the midst of this pandemic situation right now you can't rule that out particularly when people are pressure you know you are just interested in just getting to and the yeah. commodity and going back home to stay safe and all of that. So we can't really talk about companies are responsible enough to go allowed to do some okay. sports check and ensure they, they, right. they so, play so by so the please, rules. Just, okay. uh, let me get, I think we have uh, Mr. Kale Chimwosu, the Managing Director and CEO of um, TBWA Concepts, joining us via Skype. Are you there, Mr. Kale I'm here. Okay, good, evening. good evening. Have you been listening to the conversation? Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So have you been listening to our conversation on how coronavirus is affecting um, advertising? Yes, uh, some of it, some of it I've heard. Um, interesting from Yinka, who is my colleague, by the way. <laughs> Hi, Yinka. All right, so can you just give us a few two cents, put your two cents into the conversation? Well, it's um, like Yinka said, it's everywhere has been turned upside down. Uh, it is a new, I don't want to say a new normal because um, that, that would be us accepting, accepting the negativity as a normal. But it is a new perspective, it's a new framing of, of our world in advertising and marketing. And um, the, the duty we have as brand people is to put on our thinking caps and react to the situation. But always, I, I think you can make a, a hinted at it is we need to react as brand people with relevance in mind what exactly will be beneficial to the brand, but also keep us in good stead, in good um, view from the consumers who are who contribute, who are the owners of, like you said, the, the brand in, in itself. That, that's uh, very important. All right, so um, what are you looking at post-COVID, you know, for the, because we asked um, um, Mr. Inka the same question, I would like to ha hear your thoughts on it. Post-COVID, for the, for the companies that are not doing so well at this point, what are you looking at post-COVID? Well, I, I think every, every company that um, has its marketing and advertising units or support and partners will first think about how to get through this COVID issue in the short term. And that would, that would be clearly not the knee-jerk. I think Yilka talked about not having a knee-jerk reaction because you've got to maintain awareness with relevance. But afterwards, um, brands need to, again, re-strategize, think about their purpose. I suspect that um, brand purpose will come up a lot in post-COVID. A lot of people will be asking, what are the purpose, what's the role this brand is playing in our lives? So brands that can identify clearly the roles that they play in the lives of most of their consumers um, or their customers, you know, for that matter, will probably have an easier um, comeback than brands who, whose roles are not so, so clear, maybe. Right, so we know that a lot of things are on hold 
right now. But it doesn't change the fact that whenever there is a crisis or something not going right, there are people cashing in still. So this is a question that the average man on the street would ask. Like, what are the industries cashing in right now? <laughs> is it not obvious? <laughs> I mean, there might be more of them that we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm not sure that cashing in is the is the right word is the right way to look at it. I think that um, some industries ha have been at an advantage in a time like this. Um, uh, there's a proverb we have in my village. It says that bad times are the benefit of a native doctor. So I think the media industry, the telco industry, the um, food and and pharmaceuticals and related industries would probably be uh, better off in these times in terms of of demand awesome all right so do you have any final thoughts concerning um, um covid and how advertising would be looking and uh, like um going forward do you have any final thoughts on that well I, one one well i don't know if it's final thought one one thing that i I know and that we've read about with, with things like this is that brands that look towards the, the problems and motivations and the insight that is um, affecting their customers will come out tops. So a lot of brands will not just be doing the spacing adverts or the support adverts for WHO or federal government. A lot of brands will be looking at inspiring people because this is a really dark period in the lives of very many people all over the world. And even in Nigeria, um, the lockdown in a few states and the partial restrictions, they, it, it, it has it. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Hello? I can hear you. I, I, you can go ahead. Okay. I can hear you. I'll say, okay. I was saying that in these dark times, brands that I inspire, that are, able to, that are able to bring up hope and optimism are, are likely to be brands that a lot of people will follow. Because I, I think there's just too much information. Um, some of it's um, fake news flying around. So a lot of people are looking for brands that will help them chat through that, that um, info obesity, but also brands that will inspire them, that will talk to them and say, look, this is a dark time. This is how we get out of it. And you know we, we will. We, uh, there's optimism that there's hope at the end of the of the tunnel. Thank so you, a lot of right. brands will be looking towards that sort of space to to connect. Awesome! Thank you so much, Mr. Kelechi, for joining us, and thank you yeah, sure. so much. It's a pleasure. Um, All right. Thank you. So we'll we'll talk to you some more, maybe sometime okay. in the future. <laughs> All right. Take care now. All right. Bye -bye. Take care. Stay Bye. Safe. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Inka, for staying you, you, You're most welcome. And talking about brands <laughs> yeah. that are able to identify with them, that's why for me, I see this as an opportunity. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, to say, even for those brands that like to use your word, cashing in <laughs> right now, yeah, it's your time. But even those who are not cashing in, who seems for the end, I think the worst is will probably be the tourism yeah. or the hospitality industry or the airlines. But imagine the message comes from the airlines. Right? We know this is a tough moment. We identify with you, we support you. It goes a long way. We know you are not selling, but you are positioning yourself in my mind so that there is life after COVID. Absolutely. And the world so is. So, are we, are we looking at. Okay. Finish. How well you are able to position yourself in their mind to empathize with them, to relate with them, to, to inspire them? Because when they survive, these are the kind of brands that will come tops in their mind. Absolutely. Right. So, are we possibly looking at price slash? Well, interestingly, some brands are actually doing that. Yeah. Even brands that are supposed to be cash off, they are reducing price to say, hey, we are concerned about this development and for you to be able to assess our product and ensure a clean and neat environment. We are, I think that was a brand that actually, without mentioning him, they spread their price by 50%. Yeah, I heard the commercial. Yeah, oh, so that's video. instructive to show you that brand that are saying, hey, we are not interested in cashing in, we are only interested about your safety because we believe where you survive, there's really a whole lot more we can do together as we go along. So that's futuristic. Right. Okay, okay, so we have so many questions. Sorry, okay, I'll I'll let, let um, Raymond says, I think, or is this a comment? I think more needs to be done on advert storytelling, creativity, example, um, advert storytelling, creativity. It says an example would be painkiller ads can be very painful to watch. <laughs> That's um, from Raymond. Then Steven says, in Nigeria and Africa, we don't have emotional connection with brands. We only have people moving 
to brands based on availability. Do you agree with that? No, I, don't. I think that is changing. No, I think that is changing. Actually, I think that is changing mo because most of the consumers are getting more discerning. I, I love this. There's a particular person. ad that I love, you know, that they're always making you feel like, you know, you are the mother hen, you know. <laughs> and a whole lot are going Yeah, a, a, a whole lot of them, you know, they're feeling like I care about you. It's not really about my product. I, I want to make sure that you look good in the face of people. I think. I think um, Stephen is, yeah, that, that is still changing. in the old Nigeria. We've, we've changed that. <laughs> yeah, you were good. Okay, so I was going to ask um, about startups. I think you mentioned something about uh, like yeah, that the cost. earlier. Yeah. No, not really That's the a question cost, from but you didn't really answer it um, very well. Sorry, no, no offense. Problem, yeah. So um, um, I would like to get your advice for uh, startups post-COVID. Um, a lot of people would think, okay so now this is selling and this is not selling so as an entrepreneur i'm thinking of going into fashion but now looking at what is going on obviously i'm not in the top priority list so i should think of something else what would you advise you know uh, 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 startups entrepreneurs after this um after we're done with the pandemic whether during pandemic or after pandemic <laughs> the basic rule for you to go into anything is to carry out your research Right. And that's fundamental. Without you compromise, understand the market, do a kind of like market surveys, know the potential in that, and be sure that you are really ready for it. And when you talk of being ready for it, really, it's not something that comes from the heart. That means you must have the passion. Because right. often time for any business, I stand to be corrected, for most of the businesses that I know, starting off is usually rough. So you must be ready and willing for that to, rough of time. course, to wither the stamp. And what keeps you going at that point is actually your passion for it. But that is because you are well prepared. It's not mm. And that's one thing we do very easily here. Because Uwa is doing something fashion and she's trending very well, I follow I her. Follow. Without knowing what Uwa is going through. Right. What are pinpoints her? How do you address? What type of shock, shock absorbing potential do you have in place? Those are the things that people need to take care of. Don't jump on it because you see everybody go that line. Be sure that you are I ready. think I even want to add a question from Patricia. It says, what would you say is the minimum time frame to drive stickiness in advertising for a, a, a new product launch? Yeah, at least on the average, you should have between three to six months. Wow. Yeah, sure, because of course it takes time. You can imagine the number of information people are bombarded with every day. So right. you need to be able to be consistent because if you need to be sure of your own consistency, you have that staying power. Are you going to be there for long? So people need to be sure to be confident. And that's how you build brand loyalty. You see, brand does not develop just in a day. You start off with a product. People get to use, get to use, get used to you by seeing your logo, seeing your brand and that's it, and being able to relate with you. You must be consistent and you must be there for some time so that you build your brand equity before mm -hmm. you can actually hand that price to say, hey, I've grown, I've grown up to become a brand. So okay. building up the brand equity so takes this some time. Okay, Shedrack, that's Shedrack. It says, what, what happens if an advert goes on TV or uh, radio without Alcon's approval? Of course, the, the, the law is there. They will be penalized. Fine. And if they are found wanting, it could even be as, as, as serious as taking up a legal case. Wow. And is that serious. Okay, so I, I want know. to go personal with you. Okay. Have you had a client that, you know, you knew the product was wrong, yet you still took up that job <laughs> as a, in advertising? No, for us as a professional. Why? Now, why? Because, of course, we are, we are equally bound. So what by... parameters do you look out for? One is the fact that, one, we are actually a media agency. But the creative agencies are responsible enough because they know how strong and stringent the rule of APCON is. Advertising Practitioner Council of Nigeria, they don't toy. So you need to be sure. In fact, if any, if any client sends any material to the first one, you are, is it APCON certified? If not, we help you go through that rigor of making sure it's certified. Because they need, we need to ensure some level of responsibility in our advertising space. And it is their job to ensure that sanity is well protected. So it's psychosant. It's not something that we okay, are... Okay, let me rephrase the question. <laughs> okay. Because we know that there's a lot of money to be made when it comes to advertising, both for the advertisers and the publishers, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people pursue money, right? Rather than... Uh, and they ignore the place of the values and the responsibilities of the product, whether that product will deliver. So are you in that category of, okay, let me just make all the money and whether the product is delivering or not, have you done adverts that are not delivering? Like products you know that clearly they are not promising the right promises, but yet you're still collecting your money to do their, to do, be their marketing. I'm sure during the interview, you mentioned that one has been around for 20 years. Yeah. So if you're going to travel that far, you don't want you to compromise your integrity. integrity. <laughs> so for all you care, you need to build it and you need to ensure. Oftentimes, even the clients, yeah, they want you to cut corners. If there's any client like that, mm. even then, when you advise them rightly, on the long run, they will come back to appreciate you. 
So we try to make them follow the right line. And when it's done, you find out in the long run, they're going to be well respected for it. Because even up on go to the extent of even identifying with just brand, whether or not, and when they're into mm -hmm. any problem, they come into their rescue or to their aid. So you, but you need to have started the relationship and build it right from the first thing. And that's what we advise clients. There's no need circumventing the rule or playing, playing shortcut to right. it. You just need to play by the rule. And it's all for the, it's all for the industry, it's all for the growth and progress. And that will determine how far you travel okay. in your business. So I do have one um, final question as regarding um, the regulatory board. Now I know that packaged goods is very easy to regulate them, but personally I care a lot about the average market woman or the woman down the street who may just want a painter of Gary, right? So now for, for this woman who wants to buy Gary and suddenly it's from 500 a painter to 1,500, who regulates them? Yeah, like I said earlier, there's a consumer, consumer protection agency. You see, what we need in this industry is actually education. People need to be more educated about their rights. So what's the role of national orientation agencies? Part of it is equally to So are they people. doing their job? Well, um, well, I think they are, but a whole lot more can still be done. In life, even the best gets better. So there's mm. always room for improvement, and they should improve. We need to educate our people more to know their rights and know when to call for it, and know who and who to fall back on when things like that happen. And I think that's one thing that we need to fall back on to ensure that people are not unnecessarily exploited for the just cause. Okay, there's my pan. Yeah. And so what is the role of my pan? Well, my pan is Media Independent Practitioner Council. That is the actually the association, the umbrella association for media agencies. Okay. Of course, you see the creative agency. You have the for the advertising agency. You have the creative agency. You have the media agency. Then of course you have the media. Okay. So oftentimes you find out that MIPAN is actually for the media, media yeah. practitioner, media agency. Okay. That Media Independent Practitioner Association of Nigeria, Nigeria yeah. and that is MIPAN. Okay. So they do they have their own regulations as well that they give because you kept on happening on Apcon. That's what I'm oh. just asking. Of course, of mm -hmm. course, because of course you know that whatever MIPAN is going to do is going to be a fallout of what the creative has done because the role of MIPAN is to advise clients on how to cost effectively and efficiently expose the ad material produced by the creative agency. Mm -hmm. So they're also bounded by Apcon rules too. Okay, because so whatever you place out there. Why, why I'm asking that, we know that sex sells, right? And most times, a lot of, for the creative industries, I think a lot of, if you want to sell toothpaste, just throwing a bit of romance in there, the toothpaste will sell and all of that. Are, are we tired of that? I mean, or are we getting to that point where people are beginning to be tired of that? Or are we looking for more creative ways to advertise our products without sexualizing a woman? Because I, I, I see a lot of ads, you know, if you want to do anything, just put a fine woman there and it will sell and all of that. So what do you think? Is, is that thing changing right now? Or well, is it still there? The, the truth of the matter, one must give it to you women. I think you, you, what you, you see, for most brands, really, let's give it to you in the sense that once you have your woman on the house, you've taken the whole household. True. And men are least concerned about things. When it comes to buying decisions and all of that, the, the financial reality, and that's why you see most brands tilting in that direction. But for me, I don't, there is, I don't, personally, I don't see a shift to a movie. It's just how you responsibly use the woman to connote the fact that, hey, they've got a whole lot of power. Mm. And you can't deny it. Absolutely You can't deny it. So how you now creatively and responsibly, mind the word, responsibly use it will determine the perception that you get out of it. Not in, not in overtly. If it's been, is it this subjective? Yes, people can read meaning to it. But if you are modest and decent enough and the message is clear without any ambiguity, People will understand that, look, this is the role. You see me, I don't remember the last time I know I just take my bath at home. I don't know the soap, <laughs> but somebody ensure that it's there. <laughs> <laughs> so if you, are keeping, if you are busy addressing me and you fail to address that person, <laughs> you're on your own. Yeah, that is absolutely true. And I have to say, I've watched um, some of the commercials with the brands that you represent, and I believe I know they are decent enough, like decent enough for the family to watch it. So, is it, so it, is it a personal thing that you, you have a personal, um, what's it called, morals? standing that you cannot compromise and, 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 and go with those kind of brands that try to present women in those sexuality? Is it your personal? Um, it's not It's not personal. Okay. It's a standard. Okay. It's a standard for anybody. With, because what the gospel we tend to preach is responsibility. Let's be, we don't say because of the quest for money, mm. we abandon all the rules. Because on the long run, it might not take, it might not take you far. So do it responsibly from the start. And oftentimes, you get known and respected for it. And it has paid off to help. Well. But then look at the, the, the uh, I like to be honest, right? <laughs> a woman is beautiful to look at. <laughs> like, honestly. Okay, well, so, uh, I've yeah. heard. But if you had one, one big issue that you have battled with in the advertising industry over the 20 years span that you've been in the business, what would that be? 
the biggest challenge for you? I think the biggest challenge is actually the dread of talent. It's, it's, it's really it's a disturbing, and I don't think it's peculiar to our sector. It's something that runs across, really. I mean, the, the young ones coming on board, they are getting into the profession with the wrong vibes. Oftentimes, they get carried away by the razzmatazz of the profession. That's what they see. They see the flashy car, the neat suit, and all of that. But they fail to understand the pain that goes into those two. The pain that people go through to acquire those flashy cars. If only they take the pain to understand those pain and ensure that they are well prepared and ready, mm. then, of course, a whole lot of things will change. So are, we, are you saying that with this mindset that we are looking at a decline of advertising companies? Well, not necessarily. I think see, a couple of young guys still have that virtue. It's just a matter of them understanding the fact that there's the need for you to, you see, in life, the, the, the greater the height, the mightier the fall. So hmm. there's a need for you to lay the foundation right. You need to deepen yourself very well, and that's very fundamental to make sure that they have the right training, they make sure that they have the right position, exposure. Just like you mentioned about the issue of compromise, the sexuality and all of that, some people just throw responsibility, responsible oh, advertising to the wind. wind. Yeah. And just, no, you need to make sure that you learn the ropes, to make sure that you pay your dues. And at the end of the day, most importantly, is to put value on the table. Once the value on the table, all other things will follow. But wow. if you are not well grounded, if you are not well entrenched, and yeah. you get into the foyer and you get carried away by the flashy cars or the, by, the, by the fancy tools, you see, mm. you are most unlikely. Well, you are the one causing us to get carried away now. When you give somebody brand ambassadorship and the person is all over the car, <laughs> I mean, any young person will be yeah. carried away. But, uh, well, but, but they equally need to know. <laughs> I don't know. I can't speak for other people. So if we choose anybody as a brand ambassador, that person must have. Because they do a due diligence of such people too, yeah. that they pay their dues, yeah. they actually will be. Of playing that role. Yeah. Okay. So, um, sorry, well, we're, well, I know we're almost out of time, but one quick, uh, quick, quick question. So, there is this saying that a good product sells itself. And most people would often say that because uh, uh, I don't know, maybe they don't believe in advertising, so they're like, I don't need to market this thing. This is a good product, it's going to sell itself. How true is, is that saying? Well, somebody that, that will collect money for advertising. <laughs> <laughs> I think we will answer. But the truth of the matter is that without even, it's more like a good product will sell itself. <laughs> well, you, you, you'll be shocked. <laughs> and it depends on how long you want to travel, really, because for all you care, you can imagine the number of information. Yes, you are good today, are you going to be good tomorrow? Mm -hmm. And in life, I keep on saying in life, if nothing is chasing you, make sure you say something. You position yourself well for the long haul. It's only the long haul that matters. And how you start the journey determines how far you right. go on it. So in it's one quick second. <laughs> you, need to, you need to continually build yourself and be prepared for that. And that's where advertising comes in to help you position yourself well and ready for that long journey. Okay, right. one quick question. You have an academy for media practitioners. Sure. How is that doing? And are we like going to be having new media outlet channel from your academy? Oh, sure. That's the Alphabet Media Academy. Yeah. I must say with some sense of modesty that has been doing very well to help them um, make sure that we fortify the new set of uh, young practitioners who will be coming on board. So and anybody is, that is out there right now and the person wants to start a career in media and advertising, they can Yeah, come in to marketing them. because it's all, I mean, we have people, we have resources, but from both from the client side, from the mm -hmm. agency side, okay. as well as from the media side. Awesome. So it's all encompassing. And the beauty of it is that this is an academic that tends to give you examples, really Relatable examples, relatable case studies. I keep on right. telling people Nigeria has grown over the years. We have enough case studies here than to be given example of brands that you can only imagine you never can see. But we have so many cases here. When we take some of our brands and how successful they've been in this market too, and you do a study of them, you'll be shocked with what you come out with. Even some of those cases when we tend to take them to, to, to international competition, they come mm. out top in most of the cases. <laughs> so, and that's the thing that Alphabet Media Academy brings to the table, to show people relatable cases and ensuring them that they are well fortified, they are well groomed, and they are well prepared for the market. Awesome. Right. Thank you. What a good way to wrap it up. So, somebody is saying, watching your channel for the first time from Yola. I don't want to say, wow. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Looking forward to sticking to Plus TV. All right. We look forward to hosting you every weekend. Thank you so much. I mean, this has been a really, really insightful conversation. Yeah. Yeah, interesting, uh, funny, oh, wow. educating, everything. You know, we were Thanks. thinking, okay, advertising post, what will we be talking about now? I mean, we've had a lot. And I think the what I've learned, the one thing I've learned is that even if your brand is not selling now, just make sure you are top of the mind for all your clients. And I loved what um, Kelechi had mentioned earlier, brand purpose. And you also mentioned emotional ties because people would only come to your brand afterwards when... What, what, what was it like when during the COVID time? What were you doing? How did you keep yourself in the mind? Yeah. Of, how did you show empathy? How did you show care? I think I, I'll, I'll love to wrap up on that. Thank you so much, Mr. Inkadibaya, for coming. Thank you so much for having me. Now, you can watch a repeat broadcast on Mondays, Saturdays, and Sundays at 3 p.m.
like we said earlier, it's been a very insightful conversation. Keep all the conversations going on all our social media platforms as we continue to hear what you are saying. Now, in case you missed today's quote, a good ad should be like a good sermon. At least Mr. Inka also confirms that it must not only comfort, uh, comfort the afflicted, it also must afflict the comfortable. Now, that's from Bennett, please yeah. give on. Now, enjoy the rest of your evening. And stay safe. <laughs> stay safe. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow.